This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about smoky jazz clubs, enormous shoulder pads, and how Imran never had seconds of my coffee. All that and more as we watch the season two finale of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Sophia. I am one of your hosts and joining me is my brother and my co-host. What's up, Imran? Yeah, what's up, listener? What's up, Sophia? Happy to be here. You know, I'm happy to support my dear sister as she follows her dreams. I know ever since you were a little girl, you wanted to be an obscure podcast niche host of a niche podcast of a TV show that was 35 years old. I remember you said that. I did, but more importantly, I just wanted you to notice me. I noticed you. And look, you didn't even know. You invented the word pod. You were like, one day there's going to be this thing called podcast, and I want to be on it. And here I am helping you live your dreams. I was a very precocious child. (laughs) (laughs) I noticed you. And there's going to be a lot of noticing of siblings in this week's episode. Of Perfect Strangers, sister, it is the season finale. Season finale, oh, that's right. Boy. Season two, episode 22. Get we made out it. of the city. We made it to the end of a full season of Perfect Strangers. This one titled, Hello, Elaine. And if you had opened the TV guide to read the description of this episode, you would have read Larry's free-spirited sister drops by on her way to New York where she hopes to fulfill her dream of becoming a musician, which Larry thinks is a pipe dream. Boo, Appleton. Excited to meet other Appletons. Yes, one other Appleton. This episode, of course, starring our favorite Bronson Pinchot and Marklin Baker. And we also see uh, Sue Ball in the role of Elaine Appleton. And a gentleman named Tim or Tiny Lister Jr. playing Leroy. And we'll meet Leroy a little bit later. That dude is in in a lot of things. I remember him from the (laughs) 80s and 90s. Literally and figuratively. Giant dude. This episode aired uh, April 1st, 1987. April Fool's, everyone. April Fool's Day. (laughs) April Fool's. This never happened, actually. It never happened, except that it did. So let's get into it. One, we start out in the apartment. Larry and Belky are sitting on the couch and they're looking over an old school photo album now for the young people out there. Back in the <laughs> day, we had to print photographs out and stick them onto these pages in a book. And then when we wanted to look at them, we had to pull out this book. It was called a photo album and flip through the pages. Yeah, you know that thing on your phone where it says albums and recent pictures? Yeah, all that was in a s- stitched book pasted it's in a with, book. And it with was sticky paper yeah, pages. Yeah, and yes. it was very annoying because you had clear overlays in these older ones and the and the photos always fell out and it was just just a mess. Right. So they're looking through a photo album which we find out which you know we can uh, infer is an album of childhood photos from the Appleton family. And Larry is sitting there like sort of beaming and he's fawning over these pictures of his little sister. And you can tell that he's this proud older brother. Uh, and he's like, Oh look, there's Elaine this, there's Elaine that like what a little Dickens she was. But then every time Balky asks a question, Larry's answer is like about something nasty little Elaine did <laughs> to Larry. So Balky sees one picture and he says, Why don't you have any hair? And we find out because Elaine had a first grade production of Samson and Delilah and rehearsed on Larry while he was sleeping and cut off his hair. So he's bald. You know, the old uh, Bible story of Samson and Delilah, all of Samson's strength came from his golden locks, his hair, uh, and Delilah will cut it and sell it to his enemies. He was like Uh the original Fabio. I believe (laughs) Fabio's strength. Also comes from his hair, not his chest muscles, as right. people may And think. then Valky points to another picture and he says, Cousin Larry, why is your arm in a cast here? <laughs> and we find out it's because Elaine had climbed a big oak tree in the backyard and she got stuck. And Larry went up to help her and Aww. he fell out of the tree and broke his arm. While he is this fawning, proud older brother, we also find out that, like, Elaine traumatized him all through their childhood. He's got bad memories. And we've heard stories of Elaine all through tormenting him. So, yes. this, you know, I'm and excited to, to finally see this Elaine. But then Balky has a hilarious question. He goes, oh, who is this nice man with the mustache? Larry goes, 
oh, that's Mrs. Barr, our piano teacher. <laughs> uh, and he explains some important detail that all the Appleton kids took piano lessons growing up, but only Elaine stuck with them as they got older. And he's so proud. He's like, now she's all grown up. She's about to go to college. I'm so proud of her. And then there's a knock at the door and it's Elaine come it's to Elaine. visit. So it's they Elaine. both get up quite excited and they go to open the door. Elaine comes in. She's this young, uh, sort of like very 80s looking big hair, of course. <laughs> um, she gives Larry a big hug. She's equally excited and she goes, Noogie. Noogie. That's how she greets Larry. <laughs> and she gives Balky a big hug. And then she looks around the apartment. She says, oh, Noogie, this is a great place. And Larry says, Thanks. Larry's like so proud because she's the first member of the family to see his independent like yeah. apartment in the city. And he says, you're the first member of the family to see it. And Belky says, what? And what am I? Mashed potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> and he gets a little offended, uh, which is like a funny thing to say, because why do we even say chopped liver? That's the real saying. What am I? Chopped liver? What am I? Because nobody likes chopped liver. I don't know. So, Mashed potatoes. OK. It's yeah. And so then Larry's like, OK, OK, the second, but the first member of the immediate family and Elaine goes, well, I'm honored, Noogie. Noogie. And then Belky's like, why do you call him Noogie? <laughs> And then Larry's like, uh-oh. And to his dismay, Elaine decides to show Balky what a noogie is. She grabs Larry around the neck. What's that hold? Uh, the, hold? the headlock. You put someone in a, a headlock. headlock. And she digs her knuckles into the top of his head. She's like, that's a noogie. So I wonder how, I've. you know what? It just occurred to me. How like America-centric is the noogie? Did people in other countries have something similar? Do they call it something else, but it's the same move? Mm. Is it I universal? imagine it's pretty American. Like a wedgie, a noogie, because I was a victim of noogies. I remember those from my older you cousins. Were. Uh, yeah, but, you, not but not from your little fun. sister, no, you like Elaine. No, not, no it, yes. No, that's a little. Come on, Larry. It's a little <laughs> emasculating. Uh, so she gives him the the, the noogie, and now Balky knows. Uh, and they all move and sit down to the couch. And Elaine is just like uh, having a good time discovering Balky. She thinks he's adorable. All the things yeah. she goes, she wants to know everything he knows. He thinks of America. She goes, have you tried sushi yet? He goes, no, not yet. I don't even have a racket. <laughs> Which, there's a laugh there, but yes. like, it's just ridiculous sounding. But I couldn't even figure out like what he thought. Was the I thought, what sushi I, meant? I, I thought he was thought he was thinking of the game squash, which is another squash, name for racquetball. But the other thing is, sushi is not American. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> so like, Elaine's yeah. like, I want to know what you what you think of America. Sushi, Have you tried sushi yet? Mexican food, Chinese food, these yes. are all American things too. I guess maybe in the eighties, like sushi was a big rage in America. It still is, but but she just thinks he's adorable. <laughs> She's like, is he always this cute? And Larry's uh, like, yep. Uh, uh. So Larry is super excited that Elaine and proud. I yeah. should add that Elaine's about to go off to college, uh -huh. and but then and he's telling Elaine like, I'm so happy you came to visit before you go off to college, and then Elaine's like, well. And she tells them that she's decided to go to New York. Oh, and Balky see. gets excited. He goes, New York, the big tomato. Yeah, I love it. And Larry's like, no, it's the big apple. He got close. It's a, it's a red fruit. It's red. It's yeah, a yeah, red yeah. fruit. Close, that looks, close. That's round. Yeah. And Elaine says, in fact, she's going to New York instead of going to college. Oh. And she explains that she had sent hmm. a tape of her recent piano recital to a teacher in New York. And that teacher invited her to come study with him. So she figured college could wait. Wow. You know, look, that sounds great. She's following her dreams. She's yeah. talented. Uh, ordinarily great news, not for Larry Appleton, who no, is Larry is a by the books type, a old school five year yeah, plan yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, He goes, Elaine. Plans have been made. This is going to throw off your whole life schedule. Of course, he's scheduling for everybody now. Yes. So, and Elaine's like, Noogie, I'm not like you. My life's not on a schedule. She says, right now, I just have to see if I can make it as a professional musician. She's got to try. And Balky, of course, totally supportive. He goes, we wish you all the best. And Larry goes, no. No, we don't. <laughs> you know, like, wow. 
He goes, that's the craziest idea you ever had. Ouch. Imagine hearing that from your brother that you look up to. This is very relatable. And I don't need to remind people that, you know, people do not focus on the arts. The arts as a reputable career has long been looked at as a joke, as a hobby. And I can Not to mention college is a is so expensive. It's yes, probably much yes. cheaper to go try to be a musician. In yeah, New York. college is a little overrated <laughs> and kind of a But rip back off. in the eighties, it was a very traditional. Yes, yes path. it was. Yes, it was. It still uh, is, especially for suburban kids in yeah. Wisconsin. You know, yeah. um, it still is, but uh, hopefully that's changing. <laughs> okay, so Elaine is a little bit sad and disappointed that Larry is not supportive of her plans. And she's like, you sound just like mom and dad. And Larry says, well, if you mean that mom and dad don't think you should go to New York, well, yes, I happen to agree with them. And Lynn says, but I don't, see, and it's my life. And then we get a good old Belky. Well, that's a good point, a very good point. That's a good point, very good point. <laughs> And then Elaine's a little bit upset. She excuses herself to go wash up in the bathroom, leaving the boys on their own in the living room. Yeah, and Larry's sitting there. He knows he messed up. He knows that he can't even get to Elaine now. She's not going to listen to him. He's like, she'd rather take advice from a total stranger. And then suddenly... Light bulb. His <laughs> eyes open wide. He turns over and he realizes Balky is that said total stranger that could tell Elaine what to do with her life. Larry tells Balky he needs to take Elaine out for a good time, out to dinner, and convince her not to go to New York. <laughs> Larry and Larry puts on a little bit of pressure on Balky. He goes, you're the family's last hope. Balky, they're depending on you now. You can't let them down. And Balky like clutches his chest. He goes, is this what they call a guilt trip? Larry's like, yes, it is. And Balky goes, well, you're very good at it. And Larry goes, oh, oh yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, I have no doubt Larry and the whole Appleton family are masters at the guilt trip. So we cut to the next scene. Uh, Balky and Elaine are now returning to the apartment. They've been out to dinner. Oh. And I just want to take a moment to say that Elaine is wearing a very 80s, like, oversized baggy sheath dress that goes down way past her knees with very prominent shoulder pads and, like, a sparkly brooch. Very 80s. It's like one solid <laughs> very color. Very 80s and drapey. for a young very drapey. person. Yeah. And also, very drapey. wait till, listener, you got to stay till the end. We have a new... Balky Duds report because if you notice, Balky is wearing lots of fun lots clothes. Of oh my god! Yes. This episode, every scene change, he's got something else on. I can't wait to find out and hear about these. Yeah, things. we'll get to that yeah. at the end. So Balky, they come back to the house, and Balky tells Elaine, "Like, just wait here. I'll go get cousin Larry so you can talk to him." And through their conversation, we find out that Elaine has explained to Balky her dream of becoming a musician and has convinced Balky that she should go to New York. <laughs> uh, and so Balky's like, Balky's like, OK, let me just go get Cousin Larry so you can convince him the way you convince me and tell him all the same things. And Elaine suddenly panics and she's like, no, 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 I changed my mind. I can't do it because he's not going to he won't listen. I tried already. And she starts begging Balky, like, please, 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 Balky, you tell him. You tell him. Please, please, Balky, you tell him. And then Balky starts panicking, too. He's like, please, don't send me on another guilt trip. <laughs> Boy, these Appleton so the kids Appletons are, are very, good. Yeah, yeah. they've got very similar tendencies we're seeing from yes. both of them. Neither, neither. And poor Balky's caught in the middle of it. None of them like confrontation uh, right. as Larry enters. He comes out and he's like, oh, you guys, the kids are home. Did you have a good time? And Larry's like, what did you guys talk about? <laughs> and Elaine's like, uh, Balky's going to tell you that now because I'm just tired. See you later. Bye. And she says goodnight, guys, and goes into Larry's bedroom. And Larry's like, okay, Balky, how did it go? Let me know. Give yeah. me the updates. He thinks everything. And, and Balky's like, oh, it went good. It went good. It went good. Uh, he asks if Balky got her to go to college. Balky's like, oh, we got to talk about that. Oh, we got to well. talk about that. <laughs> so Balky tells Larry. Larry's like, what did you do? He's like, well, I let her explain all her reasons for going to New York. And Larry's like, good, good idea. Smart. Let just, yeah, let, just her talk. let her talk. And he goes, I just let her talk. Uh, and then he told her she should follow her dream and go to New York, <laughs> which is not what he was supposed to tell her. And Larry goes, then what? And Balky goes, and then I said, check, please. And he runs off into the bathroom, in the back, <laughs> locks the door. And Larry pounds on the bathroom door and he pounds on the door bedroom where Elaine is. Uh, and nobody comes out. And he gives up and he walks back to the living room and he goes, 
this is my fault. You want to put out a fire? You don't send a pyromaniac as it fades to the commercial. Which implies that Balky just flamed her uh, her interest in going to New York. But Larry was the one who begged Balky to talk to yes, her. Yes, Larry is always the one getting people into these <laughs> situations, and neither of them want to talk to each other directly, and poor Balky. Right. So that Stuck is the, the end of a very short and concise Act 1. Before we get to Act 2, listener, if you want to get some podcast swag, you want to go out in the world, things are reopening. People are going to movies and stuff. Did you see this, Sophia? They're going to movies. Mm-hmm. Comedy clubs are reopening Comedy, well, here. That's, that's great for the stand-ups. They need that. Mm-hmm. You need to go out to these places with a Dance of Joy mask and T-shirt and hoodie. You can find all that at our shop, danceofjoypod.com slash shop. Maybe a phone cover. Get a phone case. Get a pillow. Uh, get some magnets. Lots of fun stuff. Send us a photo of where you're vandalizing things with stickers of our <laughs> Of and our we show. will shout you out and publicize your vandalization. You got to put get a T-shirt and then just like photo bomb live news in the background and yeah. just go Baba Sneaky and run by instead of Baba Booey with a dancing joy. <gasps> oh my god, that would be hilarious. We will send you what a surprise a prize if you do that for us. <laughs> Let's get this viral, people. Dance of joy slash shop. Act two is the Act next two. morning, sister. It's morning, and Balky and Larry are sitting at the kitchen table having breakfast, and Larry is still pouty at Elaine as she's trying to offer him coffee, and he just holds the cup up and doesn't look. Uh, it's so annoying. <laughs> uh, Balky tries to make a joke to, like, cut the tension, uh, and uh, she pours him a cup of coffee, and Balky goes, funny, he never asked for a second cup of my coffee, and then looks over and, like, smiles and winks and scowls at him. Okay, this fun is a reference. fact. This line, funny he never asked for a second cup of my coffee. Balky thought it was going to make Larry smile, but yeah. Larry is too pouty for that. But the reason he thought that is that this line was a recurring famous line from a from a coffee commercial that ran in the 1970s. Uh, and the coffee brand was super obscure. It's called Uban. Uban. Why U B N? The worst name for coffee. Uban. It was like an old school like coffee grounds that come in an aluminum tin with a plastic top. And there was a famous bit in these commercials where uh, there's a woman who hey, wait, talks here, to herself. Here it is. I'll just play the bit. Okay, just play. Sure, you can't stay for more coffee. Wait, it's late, and Jim never has a second. You know, I'd love another cup. Jim never had seconds of my coffee. Yeah, because your coffee sucks, lady. You got to give him the U ban. And fun fact: this was a recurring line in the nineteen in the in the commercial all through the seventies. But this line was also very well, very brilliantly satirized in the in the movie Airplane oh in nineteen eighty. And so perfectly, the lady in the commercial and the lady in Airplane must be the same actress. She looks exactly the like. The line is said exactly the Jim, same way. It's, it's the husband's name Except is they're Jim. They're on an airplane. Yeah, and then she uses that that joke comes up. It's one of the funniest recurring gags in Airplane. If you're a fan of comedy, you know Airplane has. Every pun, every joke, every dumb sight gag you could imagine. It's like an amazing uh, textbook of comedy. And now I kind of want to find if there's any U-Ban coffee still around. U-Ban? And I'm, U-Ban. Sh- I'm sure not because we couldn't even remember the name of this coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back in the scene. Uh, Larry's pouting there at breakfast. Uh, Elaine says, come on, Noogie, you're acting childish. <laughs> and then Larry uh, puts down his paper and he goes oh, into his boy. big brother, Larry explaining mode. Yeah, I saw this coming. And he goes on this tirade. He's like, childish? I'm acting childish? No, I think if I were to run off to the Yukon to pan for gold, that would be childish. Or if I were to sail off to the Caribbean in search of sunken treasure, that would be childish. Oh, <laughs> Or if I were to drop all my responsibilities and run off to say, oh, New York to become a musician, that would be childish. And so clearly this is a dig at Elaine, but Balky <laughs> misses this altogether, misses his point, And he starts playing along in this game. He's like, oh, or if you were to go to the opera dressed in nothing but Spider-Man underwear, <laughs> now that would be childish. And then Valky's all excited. He's like, now you do one. <laughs> First of all, points for Spider-Man underwear reference. Yes. Callback. 
But I love when he goes, no, you do it. <laughs> Larry is not impressed with that at all. <laughs> Elaine reassures Balky that Larry just doesn't understand. And she's like, I'm going to go for a walk. She's done with this. Uh, and Larry goes back to reading his paper as Balky slowly like uh, inches his chair closer there. He was on the end of the table and he hops over and he hops a little bit more and he's sitting right next to him. And Balky's like, you're upset. Oh. Uh, Larry says his best friend stabbed him in the back and undermined everything he was trying to do to protect a child from hell town. He calls hell New town. York. Wow. Jesus. Larry doesn't like Vegas or New York. I know. Larry's trend here. Just, he likes to stay in safe places. And then Balky explains that Elaine just wants to go to New York to study with a famous piano teacher. And I love this line because she wants to be a concert pianist. Her dream is to play with Phil's harmonica. <laughs> of course he means with the Phil harmonic. The Phil harmonic. Phil's harmonica. Phil's harmonica. I love it. I get it. Somebody should start a band. It's called Phil's harmonica. Yes, Phil har- Phil's harmonica <laughs> would be a string quartet. Larry's not having it. He tells Balky this conversation is over. And he gets up and he walks away from the table. But Balky is not having that. He follows him and he's insisting that Larry and Elaine must talk to each other. And then they start arguing and like spitting lines over each other in a yeah. quick well, like yeah. argument, no, 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 talking over each other. And Balky's trying to get Larry to listen to him. And Larry is refusing in this little argument. Finally, Larry puts his hands over his ears. Talk about being childish. Uh, uh, he puts his hands over his ears and he angrily starts singing the theme song from the Flintstones uh, to block uh, out Balky's voice. So he's great. like hands over his ears going, Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. <laughs> They're a modern family. This is, must be something they must have done growing up as kids when everybody maybe. got into a fight. It's so and, funny. And yeah, maybe it was like further explained in lines that were cut out. Yeah. Um, because it seems very random. So anyway, his his hands are up, blocking his ears. So Balky tickles him hey. in the like torso, yeah. and so Larry stops and like giggles for a moment, lowers his hands, and and there's like a beat of silence, and then he puts his hands right back and keeps singing <laughs> the song. It's a very funny, a very funny quick scene. And then Balky finally does a timeout motion with yeah. his hands. Remember they used that earlier in the in early in the second or last season, the timeout. The timeout. And so Larry stops. That works. Yeah. He gets Larry that to stop cuts, singing the song. Cuts everything. And Balky's like, fine, you can have your way. And he turns to walk away. And Larry turns in the other direction. Now, here we get into some physical comedy, which is very lovely and delightful. So when Larry turns his back to Balky, Balky turns around and follows him. And he grabs him from behind and like a bear hug, pinning <laughs> Larry's arms down to his side. And he's just holding him right yeah. in the middle. And Balky's like uh, explaining to Larry. He's like, listen, Elaine has very good reasons for wanting to go to New York. And then Larry's like, just because you're talking doesn't mean I'm listening. Because <laughs> he can't cover his ears now. <laughs> right, right. And then and then Balky's like, OK, if you're not going to talk to her, at least uh, you shouldn't ruin her last night with us. And Larry's like, let me go. And Balky's and Balky, instead of letting him go, picks him up. He's like, no, I <laughs> yeah, won't. And he him lifts him up off the ground. So now he's like <laughs> off the ground in this bear hug. And Balky's like, I want you're going to take us to dinner tonight. And Larry's like, no. And then Balky turns him sideways <laughs> and sort of does this crouch to brace the weight. And it's another instance. We've seen yes. this before in physical comedy where Marklin Baker like stiffens his body so yep. that Bronson Pinchot can like flip him around. Yeah. So he's holding him sort of like at this sideways angle. Horizontal, like resting on his like left leg. His as haunches, they're in a, yeah. yeah as he's in a, he's he's like in in a, a squat. squat. Yeah, he's in a squat. But but Marklin Baker's body is like stiff as a board, right? It looks right? great, yeah. So he's just like a horizontal line that Bucky's holding now. And it kind of has to be, otherwise this gag wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, so Larry's like, fine. And he agrees to going out at 8 o'clock. And he and then Balky's like, I want you to be nice to your sister. And Larry's like, Ugh. and then Balky like squeezes him tighter. He's like, fine, gonna break a rib. Okay. And then Balky sets him down, and he starts to smooth out Larry's like sweater and his bangs. That his part hair. was hilarious. He licks his fingers and he's yeah. fixing his hair. That had to and be. And Larry's improv. like looking <laughs> furious. It was so funny. And he's like, Balky's like, we're gonna have fun. Uh, and then Larry's like, I didn't agree to have fun. <laughs> And then Balky starts to go to pick him up again. And he's like, okay, okay. I'll have fun. 
Which is like typical Larry, right? Like he, everyone else wants fun. to have fun and yeah. he never Don't even expect fun. him to have fun. So we cut to the next scene. It's later that evening and we see the exterior of a club called Leroy's with some neon lighting. Yeah. Larry, Balky, and Elaine enter this smoky, and I'm talking smoky, thick cigarette smoke yeah. jazz club called Leroy's. This Reminded me of, oh my God, remember you could smoke in bars for oh, a yeah, long yeah, yeah. time back in yes. the day. It's such a weird thing to see now. But there's a band on stage. They're playing some light jazz. And uh, uh, Elaine has another kind of baggy, drapey. Yeah, her bl- whole, blue all of her outfit outfits were like shoulder the same. Pads. Yeah, huge shoulder pads. And she's like a small person. So that's yes. noticeable. Yeah. And then Balky's wearing a beret and this like amazing tunic like top yeah. that would fit in at any it's like very like eighties jazzy yeah like uh what the uh, what were those guys from the fifties the uh, uh, zoot suit guys no no after no. that the they they played oh the beatniks the beatniks it's kind of like yeah. a beatnik uh, a beatnik look tunic but I love it and I think we might hear about it later we'll find okay. out. So then they walk in again. It's like very smoky, which is, I guess, what the like cliche image of a jazz club in the I 80s mean, people, was. Yeah. And there's people like with cigarettes in their hands. I was like, yeah. oh, I remember this. And also <laughs> the set itself looks quite yeah. familiar in terms of where the entry is. It's the same set that has been used for the gym and the singles bar and the restaurant and other things in this. Show. And I guess we should mention uh, these three are the only Caucasians in uh, in the jazz club at the moment. Is that point, right? Point that out. I don't see any others. So jazz was for not white people <laughs> yeah, so, in the eighties. So in perfect strangers, you go to a jazz club and not a lot of white people there. It's wow, all white, I didn't yeah. even notice that yeah, in the yeah. scene. Okay, cool. Uh, I think there's one white lady with blonde hair in the back though. Now that I'm looking, which can be like also points for the show yeah, for no, showing absolutely. diversity, yes. right? But also like, like a little stereotypical at the same time. I guess stereotypical, I don't know. but also diversity. But like also diverse, I mean, it yes. was the eighties. That's as much yeah. as they could do to yeah. show diversity. Yeah. Through stereotypes. So they all walk in and a very large, grumpy looking, grimacing, tiny it's tiny. tall, bald man <laughs> walks toward them. And Larry gets nervous. He's like, uh, and he's like, Belky, a very large man is coming this way or something like that. And then, and the, the man stops in front of them and he's got a scowl on his face. Then he goes, Belky. <laughs> <laughs> and Belky's like, Leroy, my man. And they greet each other. And then Belky tells Leroy, he goes, get down. And Leroy ducks down, presumably because, uh, you know, you imagine that Leroy told Balky to get down, get down the Balky. day before. Yeah. And, and Balky probably like ducked down and took him literally. Or... I read somewhere that it might have been an inside joke for the producers as well, because these producers had previously worked on a series called Mork and Mindy. Yeah. And Mork in that show was an alien who was not hip to all the similar uh, colloquialisms. Yeah, fish out of water setup. Similar fish, yeah, out, fish of out of water. Yeah, fish out of water setup. setup, but like an alien from another planet. And uh, get down was one of Mark's favorite expressions. And Ro- Robin Williams, who yep. a young Robin Williams who played this. Mark, yeah, I absolutely used remember to him. duck down while saying it, get followed down. by get back up again. Back up and again. he would stand yeah. back up. He's, I mean, he's, there's a lot of similarities to Bucky with Mark. Yeah. Play, Robin so Williams and Mark. This little guy. I remember here. the get down, get back up again. <laughs> and I remember Mark sitting on the sofa on his head because that's how he thought you sit on the sofa on your head upside down. So Leroy and Balky know each other, uh, it seems. And then Leroy greets Elaine, too, with a big hug. And then Elaine's like, I want to introduce you to my brother. Uh, and Leroy's like, Noogie, how are you doing? <laughs> the, the, so she had told Leroy about her brother Noogie. The nickname is spreading. Noogie has street rep now. And, yeah. And uh, so Larry, like, nervously, uh, like, very formally and awkwardly offers him a handshake. <laughs> Uh, and then Leroy's like, listen, I got the best table in the house for you. And he leads them to this table and there's a man sitting there at the table and Leroy just picks up the whole chair with the man <laughs> in it and moves him to another table and puts him down. The there, he goes. there you go. First round. Because Leroy is a big dude. This is Leroy. It's his place. He can tiny. do it. He can, not that's tiny. That's Tiny Lister. It, this is his joint. He can do whatever yeah. he wants. He owns the place. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know? 
Elaine said she's read about this place in Rolling Stone that they always have great jazz. This is how she found it. And Larry goes, oh, great. You don't need to go to New York. You can throw your life away right here in Chicago. Hi, Boo, Larry, Larry Appleton. And Valky's like, cousin, you're supposed to be nice to your sister. And he goes, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's just every time I talk, it ends up wrong. Yeah. And he goes, I just yeah. don't want you to go to New York and mess up your life. And Elaine's like, oh, I get it. You don't think I can make it Oof. in New York, do you? To be a classical pianist. Uh, and Larry goes, look, you, Elaine, you might have been the best piano player in Madison, but in New York, they will chew you up and spit you out, which is, it's kind of true. But then Balky reminds everyone, cousin, if she can make it there, she'll make it anywhere. And he turns to Elaine and continues, it's up to you. <laughs> you. And Larry and stops Larry him. And Larry stops him before he can quote any more. Lines to Sinatra's song. From the song New York, <laughs> New York. It's um, up to you. Yeah. And then Elaine goes, you, Larry, when's the last time you heard me play? In my eighth grade recital. That was a long time ago. Uh, and, and you haven't heard me play recently, so how do you know? It's so good just point. then is a very good point. That's a good point. That's a very, That's good, very point. good point. So just then the band finishes their set conveniently. And Balky says, Elaine, there's a piano on the stage. Why don't you go up and Yay. play it? And Larry gets all nervous. And <laughs> like, course. he doesn't want to cause a scene because he's Larry. And he like gets up and follows him. He's like, no, Elaine, no. And then he goes, I order you oh to my stop. God. Jesus. Holy moly. You are in public, Appleton. People can I hear you. I order you to stop. And in <laughs> fact, he Leroy yes. heard him. <laughs> Leroy, who towers over him twice his size. And he t and he intervenes and he tells Larry, he goes, hey, man, the lady wants to play. Let her play. Oh, he taps him on the shoulder. And then Larry's like, oh, yeah, that would be delightful. Great idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's not about to mess with Leroy. No. So then Larry and Balky take a couple seats on bar stools. Um, and Leroy's behind the bar. And Elaine starts playing this like really intense and fast paced, complicated classical piano piece. And she just goes right. And everyone in the bar is like in awe, including Larry. And there's a lot of like close up shots of Larry's face, like realizing the error of his way. And you see him noticing everyone else and how yes. much they're digging it. And she and, you know, the hands they cut to playing the piano are very Which good. Are clearly hers. Not, yeah. Are they? OK. <laughs> no, sure. not. But whoever that is, is very good at playing this piano. And it fades. It's a weird fade, too. It fades right in the middle of her playing and him having this epiphany. Now, listener, this episode is about Larry, who needs to support his sister in the arts, and people should support the arts. And you, listener, if you want to support the arts, we are independent creators. You can support us. You can start right here, right now. Visit our website, danceofjoypod.com slash support, and you can leave us a virtual tip in the form of a virtual coffee Buy us a coffee. You're drinking coffee right now, sister, aren't you? I, I definitely am, and it's more than my second cup. Oh, boy. What kind of roast is that? What kind of brew? Dark light? Uh, it's not you, Ben. But it's not you, Ben? I'm on the hunt for you, Ben. If anyone sees any you, Ben, let us know. My sister never has a second cup of my coffee. <laughs> nope. Anyways, so, uh, show your love. Support the show. Danceofjoypod.com slash support. Act three. Act three, we are back at the apartment. The three uh, cousins and siblings arrive home. Well, oh, I bet they smell like smoke. Remember yeah, when that yeah, one happened? Where you remember when you would have like your bar outfit? Yes. Um, because, that just, because it always smelled like smoke could, and you yes. didn't want to wear anything else. You had to keep wear it that separate. same outfit. Absolutely. You had to keep it separate because you come home smelling Out like smoke. Out to the bar every time. You're like, well, I'll just keep this for my bar. It's clothes. a thing that um, doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> Uh, the three arrive home smelling like smoke, no doubt. Larry, once again, is this beaming, proud big brother. And he's gushing out loud about how Elaine blew away everyone in that audience, everyone in that room. And Balky chimes in and we learn that uh, Leroy even offered her a job oh, playing piano. She should, she should work there. And and Balky says, if Phil's harmonica is anything like Leroy's, <laughs> you've got it made. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Elaine turns to Larry and she goes, what do you think? Should I go to New York? And Larry kind of like pauses for a moment and he says, it's not important what I think you're going to go. So you'll go. Good luck. 
And this is not the answer that Elaine was hoping to hear. Oh, you could see hear. it in her face. You could see she it in her face. She is disappointed. She's sad, but she's too tired to like make it an issue anymore. So she thanks Larry and she's like, I'm just going to go to bed. I have an early morning to get to go back to Madison. And Larry says, yeah, you don't want to get sleepy on the road. And she leaves <laughs> to the bedroom. Ah, uh, Yeah. The, and the whole time Balky is watching this and Balky is super empathic. He knows what's down. Oh, uh, Balky, Balky. Go, yeah, he walks right up to Larry. He goes, that's all you're going to say to your sister. Good luck. Don't get sleepy on the road. And then he says, can you afford it? And there's a big laugh I, from the studio audience. And I, uh, I know this confused you. This line. I don't also know why that was funny. Me, I feel like this may have been left in accidentally from stuff in the editing process. Like maybe Larry was, maybe there was a conversation about Elaine going to New York. Can you I even afford, afford it? To, oh, or something like that. Oh, can you afford maybe to something throw your got life cut. away? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It was a callback that stayed in. If anybody's watched this and can explain why he says that, let us know. There's a huge laugh from the from the studio audience, and I didn't understand why. Yeah, that was that was weird. I didn't get that either. But Larry says Elaine doesn't care what he thinks. And then Balky has had it. He gets frustrated with Larry. What happens when Balky gets frustrated? Oh, he launches into Meposian tirades. Yes, he does. He starts talking in Meposian. And so this one starts with, this is a quite a long rant, yeah. but the rant starts with, oh, yeah, 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 Yuki, Biggie, Mookie, Cousin Larry. <laughs> and then he goes off into all sorts of Meposian in this fast-paced rant, which ends with, good luck, don't get sleepy, don't, don't be, be ridiculous. Don't, don't be ridiculous. I love, I love that. As he turns away and sits down. And then he lectures Larry a little bit. And he says, Lane didn't have to come visit them. She could have gone right on to the big pineapple. Oh, he got closer. He got the word apple in there this time. Why do you think she come here? Because you are the most important person in her life. Mm. She needs you to believe in her. Oh, I love this part. This whole this whole conversation really hit home. Larry says he does believe in her, and he worries that if she chases her dream and it doesn't work out, she'll be shattered. He doesn't want her to get hurt. But Balky goes, but cousin, you're chasing your dream to be a photographer. I am photographer. Chas- <laughs> photographer. I am. Cha- you have to say it like Desi people a little bit. They do photo. He sent me the bio data in the photo. <laughs> you are chasing your dream to be a photographer. I am chasing my dream to be an American. What the difference is? What the difference is? And then another important line. He just tells him, you have to let people chase their dreams. Isn't it better to try and fail than not even try at all? And Larry says, yeah, Balky, you're right. Balky's like, do you believe in her? He goes, yes. He goes, do you love her? And Larry's like, of course, yes. And Balky, another great question, just putting it out there. Why don't you tell her this? Or as Balky says, why you don't tell her? Why you don't tell her? So Larry gets uncomfortable at the thought of like, Speaking his feelings. Confrontation. To his sister, which yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, Being vulnerable. Some families yeah, don't speak yeah, about yeah. feelings to each oh, other. Oh, no, no, they don't. So Larry starts making excuses. He's like, oh, she's already gone to bed. She's a long trip. But before he can stop him, Balky gets up and like runs to the bedroom, knocks on the door, and tells Elaine to come out because Larry has something to tell her. And Larry's like, why did you have to do that? And Balky says, because you were afraid. Yes, to. he was. So Elaine comes out of the room and joins them in the living room. And Balky tells both Larry and Elaine that they should be ashamed. Yeah. They both had something they wanted to say to the other. And they both asked Balky to do it. Right. That's amazing. They just so now he's talk. lecturing both of them. Yeah. He says, now you stand there until you say what you feel. And he walks in. He walks away into the bedroom to leave them alone. And Larry and Elaine just like stand there looking at each other uncomfortably and they make a little bit of nervous small talk about packing. Mm-hmm. packing and then huh? we hear mm-hmm. some music, Uh-oh. which means it's lesson time, lesson it's time, lesson music. time. And Larry goes, so finally they break down. And this man, I was, uh, I was at tears. I was close to tears because mm-hmm. I, I could feel the emotion. Larry's like, you remember that oak tree thing? He says to Elaine, he goes, well, if I had known that I was going to break my arm before I climbed up to get you, I would have done it anyway. And Elaine is touched. She goes, really? She goes, you know, the only, Elaine says, the only reason I climbed that tree was that you would see what a good climber I was. She says, that's why I did all that silly stuff. I just wanted you to notice me. Larry tells her he did notice her. And he also admired her 
that she could do all this crazy stuff. And she's kind of fearless. She took chances. And he goes, you know, I always wanted to climb that oak tree, but I never got up the nerve until you got stuck up there. And Elaine goes, wait, that was the first time you climbed the tree? <laughs> and Larry's like, yeah, look, don't tell the other kids about this, especially Billy. We know how he makes a big deal out of everything. Which uh, I feel like was setting up a situation, like some uh, background for well, a later he's, episode. He's talked about Billy before, and I understand yeah. we get to meet Billy. He will be the only a other sibling. Later. So then they're kind of like made up. This is this lesson time is more isn't really lessons. It's just like expressing feelings. Yeah, um, just opening so Larry, up. And- they're kind of like made up, and Larry assures Elaine, tells her, "You're going to do just fine in New York." And he apologizes for giving her a rough time. And he explains, like, it's just that I worry about you because you were always my favorite. And Elaine is touched. She's like, I was? And Larry says, you still are. And then Elaine says, I love you, Noogie. And they hug. And Larry says he loves her, too. And then Balky comes running out of the bathroom in tears. And he grabs both of them from, like, hugs both of them. And he says, I love you both. Ah. And roll credits. Uh, I love this. I love meeting Elaine. I got to tell you, Elaine was a lot less. Um, I was expecting something else. I mean, she grew up. Yeah. No, I was expecting. I like what they did. I was expecting like a more cartoony two dimensional character from oh, the way okay. he was talking about her. And like, I was kind of surprised that she's like this fleshed out, very real character. And then this whole conflict is, you know, this is something I've been through that I've, you know, other, other, especially immigrant families, it, it kind of hits home because when you go to your parents, you're like, yeah, when I, I want to be an artist, oh, I yeah. want to go to art school. Yeah. They're like, yeah, that's a great hobby. Where are you going to, are you going to do that after college? And you're like, right. no, no, you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, this is my college. Uh, so I, I told, you know, and it like, nobody considers the arts a career and it just, it got me. Yeah. And also I think it's quite impressive. Like if, if a prominent piano teacher invited you to study with him that's That's like prestigious like i don't know why they didn't realize that and they were so fixed on larry yeah because larry doesn't care larry should have realized like that's your that's your training okay so we have i have some commentary here uh the oak tree story yeah kind of reminded me of something from our childhood do you know what i'm talking about no no okay great Uh, It's kind of different, but kind of similar. So, of course, in the Appletons, there are like a lot of kids. And this is the relationship between two of them who considered each other their favorites. With us, we are older brother, younger sister, but it was just us. No other kids. Um, So we could kind of had to notice each other all the time. But there was a time, uh, this idea of Larry like being protective and going to watch over her and help her out of the tree and Mm. then getting hurt because of it. Right. So there was a time when we were riding bikes one time. Oh. Do you remember this? Well, there's a couple of bike stories. <laughs> oh, I only know one. So for the listeners, we were riding bikes. I I don't know. We were maybe like nine and 12 or something like that. And we were going uh, a couple blocks away to like a... Uh, like a supercuts, which uh, okay. is like this a cheapy, story. yes, I was going to get a like haircut, a cheapy yes. strip mall haircut the place. The worst haircuts you're ever going to get. Sorry, pretty supercuts. young. I don't know why we were going on our own for haircuts. I think you were getting a haircut. I was, and we were on our bikes. And yeah. To get it wasn't far from where we lived, but we had to cross over some like pretty major uh, boulevards, right? Big streets. There's traffic. There's, There's street traffic. Side, traffic signals. And I was riding in back. Yeah. And you were riding in front and we yeah. were crossing uh, a, a street at an intersection. We were riding on the sidewalks, but we were crossing the street. And I think what had happened was at one point you looked back to check on me uh, and didn't see uh, a rusty little brown Chevette. Or maybe the Chevette didn't see you. I think you had the right of way, actually. I did. And he was turning right yeah, on a red. That's right. And he didn't see you, and what you were you looking see? back at the same time. So what I, did you see? I was in the back. I saw you look back, and then I saw the car hit you, <laughs> and I saw you 
sort of roll onto the hood of the car and yeah. then fall onto the street. That's what happened. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. I never asked you what you felt at that moment. Because, first of all, it wasn't a Chevette. It was a Nova. I couldn't even get hit by I a guy it was a Chevette. driving a Mercedes, right? Yeah. I couldn't even get hit by a respectable thing where I could be like, give me 500 bucks. All this goes away. Right. No, the guy's got no money. And I think I remember our father saying the same thing yes, to you, was. being like, and, why didn't you get hit by yes. a rich person? So, of course, everything. This is how we grew up. <laughs> everything I do, I couldn't I can't do right. I can't get hit by a car right. <laughs> I could not cut the lawn the right way. But this like, was the case. The thing is, no one at that time acknowledge that you were looking back. And first of all, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. You had the yeah, right of way. Yeah. It was the driver's fault. But also you were looking back yeah, yeah, to check yeah. on your little sister. Yeah. I kept, that's the I kind kept, of brother I you did, were. I remember I kept checking back on the whole trip just to make and sure. And I feel like no one gave you credit you for that at there. the time. And then I remember, I remember hitting the hood and then I remember hitting the ground and the I remember ground. looking and I was like, oh, there's traffic coming. I should probably stand up. <laughs> and then I remember standing up and the bike was all mangled and then the, the bike was mangled. The cops an took you home came. and the ambulance took me to the hospital and we were separated and that freaked me out even more. I was like, oh no, now she's Wait, alone. I don't remember that at all. You, Did we have two sets of keys or I, I don't took know, the keys but you didn't home? Co- you didn't come with me. The cops took you home and the bike's home. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, I, don't, I have zero memory of that part. But um, I remember the bike being mangled. I remember the ambulance coming and you were just like a little bruised. No, yeah. he was no, fine. I, it was fine. I didn't he even break fine. anything. I had a couple of cuts. I got very, very lucky. Yeah, you didn't break an arm he like Larry did yeah, falling he, out of Right, he wasn't going that fast. But I did get hit by a car. Yeah, that was the story I thought you were saying. So just, so, I'm sure Larry yeah. and Elaine had tons of these stories growing up. Yeah. And in fact, if you know, they, there's an Easter egg where this whole Samson cutting his hair uh, earlier in the episode, The Unnatural, he explains uh, that uh, uh, Elaine would tie him down and cut his hair off uh, yeah. all the time is how he explains Elaine to Balky. Oh so this comes back. But yeah. So that's funny. That made you uh, think of the that car hit. What <laughs> was the other? What did it make you think no, about? That, like, did no. you have any brother or sister uh, recollections as you watched this episode? Not really. That, uh, but the, I, I do distinctly remember the story you told. I'll never forget that. Yeah, we are a different kind of brother and sister. For anyone who's wondering, who's listening, like we are. I don't think in our whole entire lives we've ever been disproving, uh, or disapproving, I should say, of of each other's like plans or ideas. We're like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, you. do your thing. It's cool. Do you do yeah. what you want? You need help? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we've whatever been, do a podcast. That's I'll be thing. on it like, with you. <laughs> we've been supportive of each other, so it's not. Well, like, the thing is, we kind of had to be right. because mm. we didn't have mm. that from mm. anyway. Mm. That's the other podcast, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is making ourselves. So we're uh, not going to see therapy for our childhood. Yeah, this trauma. is a little yeah. bit of this is therapy right now, listener. Just so you know, so <laughs> Sue Ball playing Elaine. We don't get to see Elaine again. This is a one and done. But I think they talk about her later. But and we will see Billy. We will see Billy. Um, and that's, you know, like they talk about all these kids in the Appleton family, but we don't really uh, meet many of them. I thought she was a great, great fleshed out Elaine. Not what yeah. I was expecting. Uh, here's another thing I was expecting was to see Dimitri and we don't. We don't, which I thought was a missed opportunity because I would have imagined now at this point of watching the show. I start to imagine what we might see Dimitri as, and I thought we would see in the background Dimitri with a, with a smaller Dimitri yeah. as a younger a sibling. Younger. You know, there's something about, I think, you know, we've discussed how all these episodes of the uh, second half of the season may, uh, may be out of order coming to the yeah. end of the season. And if you notice, Balky's hair is, it seems a yeah. little bit longer, and in the last episode it was a lot shorter. Sure. Yeah. So things are definitely flipped around, and they were aired in different orders. So mm. I don't know. I think maybe this is the last season where that kind of stuff would happen. They're still figuring and things out. Yeah. yeah. So we had a lot of good Balkyisms as always. Uh, the line about sushi. I haven't tried sushi. I don't even have a racket, which I still don't fully understand that joke, but okay. He thinks it's a sport. I don't know. He thinks you play it's a sport. A yeah. Squash, sushi. Okay. New York, he calls the big tomato and the big and pineapple. And the big pineapple. I like both of those. Uh, he's freaking out about going on guilt trips and of course, Phil's harmonica. Her dream is to play with Phil's harmonica. Don't be ridiculous. Said one time. Of course I have. Don't be ridiculous. 
ridiculous. <laughs> Which was in the Miposian rant. Yes, at the very end. Yeah. And then we also get, that's a good point, a very good point. Uh, and we get Balky going, well, we got to talk about that. And we get a huh. And then we get and Miposian. Oh, yeah, yeah, Yuki, Biggie, Mookie, Cousin Larry. <laughs> we get some good Miposian ranting, which he's done several times on several occasions. Uh, other running jokes. We got Larry uh, eyeing Balky while coming up with a plan. His light bulb. Yes, his light he's bulb looking face. at him going, oh, yeah. Balky. Uh, and Balky shrugging off compliments that he doesn't understand. And then this physical comedy yes, bit where Balky Larry is stiff as a board yes. and Balky's flipping him around. Balky's and- lifting him and spinning him. <laughs> and sometimes it's upside down. Sometimes it's just at a 90 degree angle, 45 degrees. It's amazing. Okay, now we are at the section of our show called Perfect Strangers Today, in which we talk about if this story were to happen in modern day, how would things be different? Well, you know, these days... College may not be uh, your route to uh, achieving your your potential. Yeah, and these days, anybody in any creative field, whether it's acting or arts, uh, like uh, visual arts or music or comedy, you're going to have a social media presence, and that's how you're going to get your music out there, get your name. And so Larry wouldn't have been like, he wouldn't have gone from eighth grade all those years never having heard Elaine's playing no, she would have seen he would have seen little clips uh she would have been on YouTube, soundcloud spotify, spotify SoundCloud, soundtracks. garage band all that stuff but also instagram also just that path of like you have to go to college like i think parents see these days if your kid has yeah. a talent and the video goes viral you For get sure. him in there but it's not just that if your kid is good at like league of legends and esports video games you put a controller into his hand yep if your kid there's that kid i always bring up He's like seven. He reviews toys. He is the highest earning YouTuber. He makes like twenty million dollars a in year in the world. Just opening He's seven toys years old, eight years are, old. Probably. Yes, that are sent to him and playing with him. That kid doesn't need college, no. and he's only twelve, he's and he's set. like a billionaire. So uh, okay, so <laughs> yeah, a lot of our PS today comments are about social media, <laughs> but let's move on to some other PS today thoughts. Um, those shoulder pads got to go. Do uh, you think those will ever come back? Did they come back and go already? Negative. No? I don't. Shoulder pads? Uh, they have not yet come back. Other 80s fashions yeah. have. Yeah. I'm not sure shoulder pads will come back because that's not the the style of beauty anymore. Everyone wants to be like narrow and svelte. Yes. Yeah, streamlined. No, yes. we already mentioned uh, you can't smoke in bars like you could. No smoky jazz clubs. And, and of course, we talked about the photo album, right? Like, you wouldn't open up a book to look at uh, photos from your childhood. Well, but now what they're do parents all do now? It seems sad because you we you've seen, you remember our... Baby we, books, We yeah. have photo albums that were, like, occasionally we'll pull out and be like, oh, look yeah. at this. But, like, what do kids... Parents do um, do store them in the cloud. Oh, God. What if, just, what, the if cloud. what if all the cloud goes down? Then you've lost all the baby right? pictures. Print that, print it <laughs> they out. have albums on social media. They have albums on Google Cloud. They have albums uh, like some people, their whole lives are on Facebook already and social media. They've grown up. Google Google Drive never goes down. Yeah. But yeah. No. And then some people, yeah, have literally gr- are growing up on the Internet and not of their choosing. Your parents put your photos up as you're growing up. It's there. It's not your fault. And if you didn't want it there, it's too bad. And also, if this story were like more modern, then Elaine wouldn't be tormenting uh, Larry by cutting his hair off or whatever. She would torment him by cutting his hair off and then posting a picture about uh, it. While he was asleep Instagram. while she did it. Yeah, she'd take yeah, a little video. Or like live streaming his fall from the tree or something like that. All right, let's get to my favorite section. It's time for a Balky Duds report from Rainy. This one, she says it's a little bit lengthy because, as we mentioned, he wore a lot of different things. I haven't heard this yet. Sophia, you haven't heard this? Uh, I haven't heard it, but before we play it, let's just remind everyone what Balky Duds is. Balky Duds, B-A-L-K-I-D-U-D-S, is an Instagram account and now good friend of ours. Uh, run by a woman named Rainy, who talks about Balky's clothes on every episode. So check out her Instagram, Balky, at Balky Duds, for more. 
Let's hear from her. Hey, Dance of Joy. This is Rainy from Balky Duds checking in to talk a little bit about Balky's outfits in season two, episode 22. Hello, Elaine. Hello. And we've got four distinct outfits in this episode, wow. two of which I have much to say about and two, you know, that are just kind of his store bought or less Balky like extras. So first off, in the beginning of the episode, when Elaine comes to visit initially, Balky is wearing a Balky vest, which is kind of just black with like a slightly goldish brown flower print mm-hmm. on it. Yeah. And I have to say so far, this is the least inspiring Balky vest yeah. I've seen. I'm just not feeling it. So because the only emotion it evoked for me was my least favorite Girl Scout cookie, I'm going to call it my least favorite Girl Scout cookie. I don't have any further title for it. That's just all I can think. <laughs> I, I love that. I thought she would name love the it. cookie. Like, I'm yeah, calling these Samoas. That's not your least favorite. I'm, no, that's everyone's most favorite. Yeah, though it's going to be that one. Like, trefoils. Little, yes, the stupid trefoil butter <sighs> cookies. Trefoils. Those are boring. I'm calling this trefoil. No, we're going to stick with her name. Her least favorite, least Girl, favorite Scout cookie. Girl Scout cookie. I'm down. Best. I follow. Okay. And he changes into that sort of light, thinner, store-bought looking bluish paisley vest, which we've seen in like two or three other episodes this season, I think. Not that exciting. I do want to give a quick shout out, though, to the next vest we see, which although not officially a Belky vest, also looks kind of store-bought. It's, a, it's like a black vest and if you look closely it has stealth paisley it's oh. almost like a translucent looking design on it and the shirt he's wearing under it is just super busy so this is an amazing yeah. super bulky combination of prints all i can think is Printing. the like classic 13th floor elevators album cover except maybe slightly less effectively psychedelic and then of course the last thing we see in this episode when they go to the jazz club is bulky's like Art school, I don't even know, art school bohemian frock. That's good. I am a terrible fashion reporter because I can't even define frock for you. It might just mean like any outfit, but this just screams frock. I don't think I've ever felt so compelled to use that frock. word. It is amazing. <laughs> Wait, su- well, okay, hold we, on. We I called it a tunic, a tunic, but I think frock is better. Do you know what? When you say frock, you know what I think of is like little toddler baby a dresses. Really dressed yeah, like with a, elastic sleeve. With for a, like a yeah. yeah, like an eighteen month old. Yeah, a fro- but a frock tunic. Okay, it's a frock. Let's see what else she's got. This is so good. I love these. It's the moment. It really makes it clear that like Balky goes to this jazz club and he has a damn personality about it. <laughs> so really nice way to wrap up the season. I was uh, really taken on quite the fashion roller coaster this episode, so I hope that you enjoyed both watching the episode and hearing my report. As always, this is Rainy from Balky Duds. You can find me on Instagram at Balky Duds, all one word. See you later, guys. Thank yeah, you, Rainy. Thanks, Rainy, as so always. Great. Those are so great. She brings the heat, as always. And, listener, we have a special surprise. Stay subscribed since this is the season finale, sister. Next week, I thought, did we take a little break uh, from the episode recaps? We're going to do a season break special, and guess who's going to join us? I'll tell you, it's Rainy. Get out, get out of, the, of city. the city. We're going to get to meet Rainy. We'll hang out. We'll find out what, you know, what she loves about Perfect Strangers and about her and why she started Balky Duds. This is my first question. Yes. I need to oh know. God, I, I cannot died. wait. This will be a super fun conversation. Stay with us to hear more from Rainy herself. I think the break is nice. It gives us a break from having to do the notes. It also, I think, gives the listener if they want to catch up to the shows. Yeah. And then after that, we will return. Season three, new season, new jobs, a new apartment. And they explain most of these things in the episode. Not all of them, but we'll Not see what happens. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. What's with all this? No, no, they're not going to talk about it. Okay, fine. I will just suspend my disbelief for another week. Okay, listeners, if you are still with us, if you've been with us through two entire seasons of Perfect Strangers, leave us a rating and a review or get in touch with us and let us know you're still with us. You can send us an email at danceofjoypod at gmail.com. You can send us a voice message on our website, which is danceofjoypod.com. Or you can hit us up on any of the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are at Dance of Joy Pod. We'd love to hear from you. 
Subscribe so you don't miss a show, listener. And most importantly, share this with your 80s TV-loving retro friends. Share this with that weird dude who only uh, likes music before, like, 1984. (laughs) He'll probably, he'll enjoy it. I'm that guy who's like, I only like hip-hop before 1994. The rest of it is junk. So that's how old I am. Anyways, that's neither here or there. Thanks for listening to Dance of Joy. And now we are so happy. Now we are so happy. We do the dance of joy. Hey, 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 h